Today I'm going to show you the family tree of the Fitzgerald dynasty, one of the most important noble dynasties in Ireland during the last 1,000 years. I'll also be covering a bit of Irish history in general, as well as a bit of Welsh history. And finally, I'm going to share with you what this famous person has in common with this famous person. Before we look at the family tree, let me first explain how the histories of Ireland and Wales differ from the histories of Scotland and England. After the Romans left Britain, there were all sorts of small kingdoms on the scene. These are just a few of them. The seven main Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in the south eventually merged to become England, and the several Gaelic kingdoms in the north eventually merged to become Scotland. But in Ireland, a single unified Gaelic kingdom never did come to exist. Sure, there was the title of High King, but that was more of a ceremonial thing, and it wasn't kept within one family. Likewise, there was never really a single unified kingdom known as Wales. There were a few times when one of the Welsh leaders came to dominate, but this never lasted for long. So what happened was that the English, now led by the Normans, eventually invaded and took over the various smaller kingdoms that were still left. So let me quickly show you some key dates. In 1171, Henry II was given lordship over Ireland by the Pope, although in reality, several smaller Irish kingdoms went on to exist for several more centuries. So basically, Lord of Ireland became just one of the many titles that the King of England held. Then in 1283, Edward I managed to capture all of Wales, but this time there was no title Lordship of Wales given. Instead, the Welsh land simply became part of England, and the title Prince of Wales was given to the king's oldest son. Next, in 1542, Henry VIII was crowned King of Ireland. So now, Ireland was finally a single unified kingdom, but the king was, well, the same guy as the King of England. Then, of course, in 1603, the thrones of England and Scotland became united under James VI and I, and therefore all three kingdoms now had the same monarch. In 1707, England and Scotland officially merged to become Great Britain, but at this point, Ireland was still a separate kingdom, albeit ruled by the same monarch. This was fixed in 1801, when Great Britain and Ireland merged to become the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Of course, the story does not end there. In the 1920s, most of Ireland left the UK, and by 1937, everything except a small part up here became the Republic of Ireland. That left the UK as the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which is what it is today. Well, at least for now, <clears throat> Brexit. Anyway, all of this was just a way for me to explain why I can't do a single family tree of Irish or Welsh monarchs in the same way that I did one for Scotland and England. But I did really want to do some sort of family tree relating to Ireland and Wales. So what I decided to do was cover one of the most important dynasties to come out of that region. So I chose the Fitzgeralds. Let's now look at the tree. First of all, you need to know that the word Fitz simply means son of. So Fitzgerald just means son of Gerald. And the original Gerald that the name refers to is this guy here. He's called Gerald of Windsor because he was born at Windsor Castle. In fact, his father Walter was the very first constable or governor of that castle. Windsor Castle is, of course, to this day, one of the primary residences of the British monarch. However, it was originally built by William the Conqueror. Walter had been a childhood friend of William's, and that's why he ended up in charge of the castle. 
So basically, the Fitzgerald dynasty was not originally Irish. At this point, you could say that it was English, or more accurately, Norman. But even that would not be 100% correct, because the dynasty actually had its origins somewhere totally different. If we go back one more generation, we come to Otho Gherardini. Otho was actually born in Florence, Italy, where the house of Gherardini was already a prominent family. So, surprise, surprise, the Fitzgeralds, who are said to be more Irish than the Irish, actually originate from Italy. But they also have a strong connection to Wales. That's because Gerald married Nest, or Nesta, who was a Welsh princess. In fact, one of the most well-known princesses in Welsh history. Nest's father was the king of De Huibarth, which was located in South Wales. His grandson, known as Lord Rees, is one of the native Welshmen who held the title Prince of Wales. He is also a direct ancestor of the Tudor dynasty, which went on to rule England. In a future video, I hope to cover more about the original Welsh princes of Wales and their connections to the Tudors. But for now, let's go back to Nest. Early in her life, the Anglo-Normans invaded her father's territory, and she ended up in the English palace with the individual who would eventually become King Henry I. And there, she became one of his many mistresses. In fact, she had an illegitimate child with him named Henry Fitzroy. Fitzroy meaning son of the king. But eventually, she was married to Gerald, who was one of the king's allies. Together, they had several children, including William and Morris, both named Fitzgerald, because they were the sons of Gerald. Sometime during their marriage, an incident occurred in which Nest was abducted by a Welsh prince. Much has been written about this, and the details are somewhat unclear. But because of the abduction, Nest is sometimes referred to as the Helen of Wales. In the end, though, she was returned to her husband. And in fact, several years later, Gerald was able to get revenge and kill the guy who kidnapped her. But he did not live long after that, and Nest actually ended up marrying a second time to a man named Stephen. That's why her son by him is named Fitzstephen. Which finally brings us to Ireland. In the years 1169 to 1171, the Normans, you could also call them the English, invaded Ireland several times. The main leader of the invasion was a man named Richard Strongbow, but before Strongbow launched his major offensive, he sent several smaller armies ahead of him. The first was led by Robert Fitzstephen, the son of Nest that I just mentioned. The second was led by Raymond Fitzgerald, a grandson of Gerald and Nest via William. He married Strongbow's sister and was thus his brother-in-law. So you've got half-brothers here and brothers-in-law here. Strongbow himself invaded Ireland in 1170, and overall things went in his favor. But by this point, King Henry II started to worry that Strongbow might set himself up as a rival king. Therefore, in 1171, Henry launched his own invasion of Ireland. It was from this point forward that the kings of England officially took the title of Lord of Ireland. So things died down a bit. The Normans who had taken part in the invasion started to carve up the lands they had taken over and were given new titles. The Fitzgeralds were chief among the new lords. Raymond actually did not have any heirs, so the family line continued through his uncle Morris. Here, the family divided into two main branches. One branch became the Earls of Kildare, and the other became the Earls of Desmond. Because these branches both descend from Morris Fitzgerald, some of the descendants ended up using the name Fitzmorris, and others retained the surname Fitzgerald. 
It's the Kildare branch that we're going to follow, as it was the Kildare branch, and later the Duke of Leinster, that became the top noble in the peerage of Ireland. If we zoom ahead several generations, we eventually come to the 8th Earl of Kildare, Gerald Fitzgerald. He was the first person in the family to serve as Lord Deputy of Ireland. Remember, the actual Lord of Ireland at this point was the King of England, but obviously the King was often busy with other matters, so a deputy was appointed to be the person on the ground who really ran things. And Gerald Fitzgerald ended up becoming a very strong and powerful Lord Deputy. In fact, he was sometimes called the Uncrowned King of Ireland. He had a son, also named Gerald Fitzgerald, who was the ninth Earl, and who also served several times as Lord Deputy. But it was with his son, the tenth Earl, that things took a different turn. While his father was in London, Thomas launched a rebellion and publicly renounced his allegiance to the King of England. The king at that time was Henry VIII, who had fallen out with the Catholic Church. Thomas thought this might be a good time for Ireland to become independent, but his rebellion failed, and he and several of his uncles were executed after being held at the Tower of London. He was given the name Silken Thomas because his guards wore silk tassels on their helmets. It was because of this Kildare Rebellion that Henry VIII decided to upgrade his own title from Lord of Ireland to King of Ireland. And from this point forward, the English kept a standing army over in Ireland in order to maintain their control. Over the next 70 years or so, the English also managed to defeat all the remaining Gaelic kingdoms, and therefore by the time of the Stuarts, Ireland was finally united as a single political entity. So with the execution of Silken Thomas, the Earldom of Kildare was forfeited. However, it was eventually restored and given to his brother Gerald. That line eventually died out, though, and the title passed to the descendants of the next brother, Edward. If we go down a few generations from him, we get to James Fitzgerald, the 20th Earl of Kildare. It was during his tenure that the family's title was upgraded from Earl to Duke, and therefore he became the first Duke of Leinster. He married Lady Emily Lennox, who was the granddaughter of Charles Lennox, the first Duke of Richmond. That duke was an illegitimate son of King Charles II. This means that the remaining Duke of Leinsters all have a bit of Stuart blood in them. And if we zoom forward to today, you can see that a Duke of Leinster still exists and that the title is still held by a member of the Fitzgerald family. The current Duke is Morris Fitzgerald, and he is the ninth Duke of Leinster. But being that the province of Leinster is now part of the Republic of Ireland, the current Duke now lives in England. Leinster House, which is the palace where the Dukes of Leinster used to live, is now home to the Irish Parliament and the offices of the President. Okay, a few more things that I'd like to point out. You may have noticed that the Fitzgerald coat of arms looks very similar to a flag known as St. Patrick's Saltire. Saltire means a cross that looks like an X. The Fitzgerald's use of the red X on a white background actually predates the use of the same symbol by the Order of St. Patrick's. So it's possible that the Order of St. Patrick's chose it since by then the Fitzgerald's position was so prominent that it had kind of become a symbol for all of Ireland. This is important because if you look at the UK flag, you'll notice that there's actually three crosses. The red cross on the white background is for England. The white saltire on the blue background is for Scotland. And finally, the red saltire on the white background is for Ireland, nowadays for Northern Ireland. So there's yet another example of how important the Fitzgeralds are to the history of Ireland. Finally, let me point out a few other members of the family that I haven't mentioned so far. 
as I talked about in my video on my own family, many Irish came to North America in the 1850s after the Great Potato Famine. This included many Fitzgeralds. So, for example, one of the greatest American novelists is F. Scott Fitzgerald, author of The Great Gatsby. His paternal ancestors came from Ireland and somehow link into the Fitzgerald dynasty, although I'm not sure exactly how. Then there's this guy, John F. Kennedy. Ever wonder what the F stands for? Yep, Fitzgerald. That was his mother's last name. Her paternal ancestors also descend from the Fitzgerald dynasty. Last, let me point out someone from a different part of the world. You know this woman as Mona Lisa, but her full name was Lisa Gherardini. Her ancestors came from the same house of Gherardini that the Fitzgeralds came from. So I guess that makes JFK and Mona Lisa distant cousins. Do you have any Fitzgeralds in your family tree? If you do, be sure to leave a comment and let us know some more about this interesting family. If you find history, genealogy, and monarchies interesting, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you check the playlists, you'll find that I have videos covering the family trees of famous dynasties from all over the world. And to see what else I'm up to, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching.